All right, so we're going to go ahead and continue with page 11 and of lesson 11. And this one involving proofs uh, is going to probably require, you know, thinking of uh, answering the problem with some color. You know, I brought some highlighters along, some, some color pencils, things that you're going to need in order to think about answering the question successfully. Um, as I look at this problem, I notice, uh, I read through it, and I'm going to make a, a suggestion that we switch number two with the number three. So that's a typo that we need to make sure that we correct. And then from this point on, we're going to be adding information from the diagram, from what we read in the statements and reasons in order to help stitch up the problem. Figure A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Given. So because that's a given statement, we're going to write given right here. Uh, continuing to read down, that means that AB, so that's this line, is parallel to CD. And for parallel, we use the arrows. So one, two. Uh, also, because of the fact that it's a parallelogram, uh, opposite sides are equal. So we get a spike on AB and a spike on DC, which means that we're going to write down in line three, AB is congruent to, to DC. Okay. That gives us the fact that we have opposite sides that are parallel, opposite sides that are equal, and then we can start making some things about the angles. Reading through the rest of this statement, I realize that number six says that we have the fact that it's two triangles that are congruent. Well, there are four congruent short shortcuts that we're going to use or we're going to pick from. Uh, reading on, alternate interior angles theorem. Remember, alternate interior angles mean look for a Z. So if I think about the Z shape this way, in the corners of the Z are equal angles. So angle two is congruent to angle four. And for the same reason, a Z shape in another direction, Z shape going this way, we know that angle one is congruent to angle three for the exact same reason, alternate interior angles. So therefore, here's what we have. We have a side, we have an angle, and we have another angle, the way that they are oriented tells us that this entire triangle is exactly the same as this entire triangle by angle, side, angle. We have one more line we need to fill in. But the truth is that if we're going to show that E is the midpoint, that means that along the line AC, E is exactly in the middle. And that means that this line and this line are the same length. So this line needs to be the same length as that one. We get that if the triangles are the same size. Uh, AE and CE, they correspond, and they are parts of congruent triangles, and they are congruent. So by C, P, C, T, C, we get that those two are the same length, and therefore E has to be in the middle because this half equals this half. 